Well, hey friends, welcome back. I am Jason. In front of me right here, guys, I have my collection, my assortment of axes. Now, I'm not an axe collector. Everything that I have, I use for some purpose. And axes are really cool in that they are used for a multitude of different purposes, and they are very specifically designed for each of those purposes. So to find a, a one-stop shop, a one-size-fits-all kind of axe is a little bit difficult to do. Now, if you're an ultralight backpacker hiker, you're probably just not going to carry an axe for the most part. I mean, even a small one like this tomahawk right here is big and it's bulky compared to like, you know, a folding saw, perhaps. For the most part, you're just not going to need it if you're one of those ultralight kind of hack hikers and you're on the trail. Now, if, it, if you're talking more of a bushcrafty type tool where you're going to be crafting stuff out of wood, you might find an axe like this, a small hatchet like this, really, really useful because it's good for carving, making all sorts of other tools with it, good for making uh, shelters. All sorts of projects can be accomplished with a small hatchet like this plum hatchet right here. Let's say you want to fell larger trees. You want to be able to chop down larger trees. You might want an axe with a longer handle such as this one right here. This is a still on the smaller side of axes, but it's starting to take up a bigger space. And again, is this something that I'd want to carry in my pack? Me personally, no, I, I don't carry an axe for the most part. It's more of a, a home site or a truck type tool because of its big bulky size. And like I said, if you wanted to take down larger trees, maybe you'd go with something like this right here. This is a Collins axe. This is actually one of my favorite axes. This was given to me by a friend and I really, really like this one. This one has a two and a quarter pound head on it. And the handle is nice and slender and smooth. It's easy to grip. And I just really enjoy using this ax right here. It's not too big, but it's just right. I can use it to, I can chop down pretty big trees with an ax like this one right here. And I just, I just really like using it. And there's a lot to be said for that. Now, if I want to chop down really big trees, like I chopped down a tree in, behind me right here, about 100 yards behind me, a huge oak tree that was frozen in the wintertime. And what did I use for that? This giant double bit axe right here, this plum double bit axe. And I really like use this one for jobs such as that one. Could I have used a chainsaw? Of course. But sometimes I like to do it the old school way, and this is a very easy to maintain, easy to sharpen, and it will last you a lifetime tool. You could break the handle and replace the handle fairly easily if you know what you're doing, and it's just something that you could pass down to the fourth, fifth, sixth generations if you take care of it. Now, if you're beating it in the dirt and hitting rocks and stuff and really wearing away at the steel, eventually you're going to wear the thing out. But if you take care of it and you use it like it's intended, it will last forever. This right here is probably my most used axe uh, as far as the time that I've had it. I've had this axe for over 20 years. This is a Fiskars made in Finland. See that? Fiskars made in Finland axe. And I have used this one a lot. This is the one that stays in my truck right here. Uh, and it doesn't have any real sentimental value to me. It's not that expensive to replace this ax. Uh, it's pretty much bomb proof. If it got stolen out of my truck, I'd be disappointed just because I've had it so long. But it's, uh, you know, not the end of the world. It is pretty much indestructible. A lot of people will argue, you know, wooden handle ax over the, the synthetic whatever some sort of composite material this axe is made out of. A lot of people will argue that, you know, you if this breaks, you can't replace it. You can't replace the handle and the, and the axe is pretty much useless at that point. And I agree. However, try to break one of these handles. Even if you were trying to break this handle, it would be really, really difficult. You'd probably end up just hurting yourself <laughs> before you broke this handle. You could run it over with the truck and it probably won't break. It, it's really, really hard to break it. The only thing the only point that i would mention is maybe in ultra ultra cold climates perhaps this handle might get a little bit more brittle i mean sub-zero crazy cold temperatures this might be more fractionable fractionable easier to break in really really cold temperatures perhaps but i don't know that to be a fact any of you arctic dwellers let me know what your thoughts are on that this is 
a bomb proof uh, tool right here. I've used it for sledgehammer type activities, you know, really pounding stuff super hard. And then I've just, I've used it to clear trees out of the trail. If I'm, when I, when my truck approaches the road or when my truck's driving down the road and there's a tree across the road, I've cut big trees in half using this and then use the truck to pull the two ends apart and clear the road. Really, really handy tool to have in the truck. But again, it's big, it's heavy, and I wouldn't want to carry it all the time. It's just, it's just not something I'm going to put in my backpack and carry into the woods, you know. If I was building a log cabin, this would be a really nice tool to have. But again, that's a more stationary situation. Now, perhaps your goal in mind is to split wood. Now, perhaps your goal for your ax is to split wood. If your primary purpose is splitting wood, then you want, in my opinion, something like this. This is a heavy, heavy splitting maul right here. It's got a very wide wedge shape right there, and it is designed to split wood apart. The same is said for this tool right here. This is a Fisker's splitting ax, I guess is what they call it. And it's got that really big wide wedge shape that is designed to penetrate into the wood and push two parts, pieces of the wood apart. And this is a really, really, really good tool and it works very well for splitting. Would you want to chop a tree down with it? No, would it work? Yeah, of course you could chop a tree down with this big heavy splitting maul right here. Of course you could chop a tree down with it, but man, you will get worked. <laughs> it will wear you out swinging this all day. But for splitting purposes, it's the perfect tool. Um, now, if you tried to split wood with, let's say, this axe right here, if you tried to split wood with that axe right here, what happens is this. Twisty piece of hickory right here, and it's a tough wood to split. And if you try to split wood with a small felling type axe like this one by the way this is a sa wetterlings axe and i've had this one a long time great axe the original handle i haven't broken it yet i've tried to be careful and not over strike and hit the wood handle right there but uh if you try to split with an with an axe like this what happens is it buries itself deep into the wood like that and it's difficult to get out it's not really that great for splitting. Now, what I would do if I was going to split wood with this one tool, and this is the only ax I had to choose from, I'd, I'd select a better log for kindling purposes. But if I was going to try to split, what I would do is I would do something like that. And then I would baton the ax into the wood like that. But, or one of the other tactics that you can do if you want to split wood with an ax like this, is you stick it in there like that, you could turn it over like that and drop it on the head like that. So the pole is hitting your stump, your splitting surface and always split wood. If you're splitting wood, split on top of something like this on top of a log, it's just gonna save you time, effort. You're not gonna bury your ax into the dirt and hit rocks and stuff like that. And it's just gonna last a lot longer. But I drop it like this, And then I've got my wood split for the most part. But with a significant amount more effort, I can split wood with this ax right here and it gets the job done. And same thing here. Now this is a tomahawk made by Jason Smith, Hobo Forge Survival. And this is an awesome tool in the fact that it's very lightweight. It's easily portable if you take the two parts apart. You could take it apart just by tap it on the end and the head comes off. And that could be used for all sorts of other purposes, like a small little hand axe. You could butcher an animal with that, taking the head, the handle off. You could use it like a little ulu, and it's perfect for that. And like I said, you can easily replace the handle with a branch from the woods, and it'll get the job done because it just kind of friction fits like that, pound it into place, and then you're ready for action. So. For that reason, the tomahawk is an excellent, excellent tool. And you could, if you were a backpacker type person and you were going to a 
further distance and you wanted to make a camp further away, you could just potentially pack that axe head or the tomahawk head and not the handle maybe and make the handle when you get there. So for that reason, the tomahawk is a really, really cool tool. But again, look at its design. It's made for chopping. It's made for carving tasks. Very good for carving tasks. I could take away a lot of material off of this, this piece of wood right here and start to round this off and make myself some sort of mallet or something or some other piece of tool or a, a piece that I need for my, my camp that I'm making, tent stakes. You can make short work of tent stakes with a tomahawk like this. Very lightweight, easy to use, quick little chops like that, shaves off accurately, gets rid of material pretty quick. So the tomahawk, like this one, is an excellent tool. And the same can be said for this little marbles axe head right here. Right here, this one is actually a really good kindling splitter. So in conjunction with a mallet, a wooden mallet, baton, you can make short work of some kindling with this axe because it's got that kind of wide shape to it. But this one is also quite good for carving chores because you can choke up on it. I made this handle in a previous video and I made it so I could choke up on the axe head like that and get really delicate, fine, accurate little chops. And this works quite well for carving tasks. I really like these small little axes for that reason right there. Driving wooden tent stakes, all sorts of things. This is a handy, I mean, you can drive nails with it, of course. Um, I mean, why would you drive nails in the woods? I don't know. Maybe you pack the nails and you're building some sort of shelter and this is the hammer that you brought because it's a multi-tool, I don't know. But uh, again, very, very handy to have a small little hatchet like this one. It's much more difficult to replace an ax handle, wooden ax handle, than it is a tomahawk handle. But it can be done with a little bit of practice. It's not that difficult. The ax is an amazing tool, but I think of it primarily as a homestead type tool. Something that's going to be at home that I can go get for those big heavy chores that I need. If I need to beat on something like a sledgehammer type tool, I might grab this ax right here or even my big heavy splitting mall right here and use it like a sledgehammer. I've done it lots of times. If I need to chop some sort of big branch or a tree falls and it's, you know, hanging out into the field or something like that and I need to, and I don't feel like getting the chainsaw out and all that, I might grab this ax right here and just make short work of it. Is it something that I'm going to carry with me all the time? No, personally me, no. I'm not going to carry even a small hatchet like this. For the most part, I'm not going to carry something like this in my pack because it's just big, heavy, you know, a bulky item that takes up a lot of space and the juice just isn't worth the squeeze for me. You may disagree and you may be a diehard ax junkie and where you live, perhaps, maybe you live in the far north and, and an ax is the tool. You need lots of firewood and you need big firewood to get big fires going in a survival situation. And that's, yes, awesome, fantastic. But where I live, I found the machete to be much more useful, green, spindly, uh, loose, free hanging stuff, machete gets, gets the job done, an ax, try to shop, chop down or slash through the bush, l small little vines and stuff like that, and just thick undergrowth with an ax, you're going to have a very difficult time. And that's why it's specifically used, axes are specifically used in further north regions as opposed to, you know, let's say the jungles of the Amazon. They don't use axes there as much, of course they do but not as much as they would like a machete type tool. Or let's talk about a saw. A saw is an extremely useful tool and for the most part, it's a lot safer. I've cut myself with this ax right here. I cut my leg really bad one time with that ax. Just a small lapse in focus, just wasn't paying attention for a split second and that's all it takes to hurt yourself really badly with a really sharp tool. And we'll talk about that in a second how to sharpen these things and they should be really sharp because it takes a lot less effort. They're a lot more efficient to use uh, when they're really, really sharp. Not necessarily safer. A lot of people say a dull tool is a dangerous tool. Yeah, maybe you perhaps um, because you're putting a lot more effort into it to get it to work the way that you want. But a sharp tool is, is extremely, extremely dangerous if you're not careful. So, and I have, I have scars to prove it. I am not going to carry a large heavy axe like this with me in my backpack. As much as it's nice to have when you get to camp, I do not want to carry it to camp. 
if I, it's in my truck or I've got some other means of carrying it, then yeah, fantastic. This is a great tool. And I just really, really enjoy using them when an ax is the appropriate tool. Saws are safer, more efficient a lot of times, uh, easier to use. You, you need to practice with these. It takes a little bit of practice to get good with them, get efficient with them, and to use them safely. A saw is pretty easy to use for the absolute beginner, for the most part. And the problem with a saw is that once they're dull, uh, they no longer work really well. It's quite difficult, if not impossible, to sharpen some saws. So most people don't possess the skills to sharpen a saw. You're just going to dispose of it and then get a new one. An axe, however, and historically speaking, that's why axes were so popular is because they were fairly easy to mass produce and they were really easy to maintain and to use for a lifetime. You could take an axe like this and replace multiple handles perhaps, but this ax head right here, as long as you're not beating it into rocks, it's gonna last you your lifetime. And that's why axes were used on the frontier in America. They were portable, semi-portable, and you could get a lot of work done. You could build your log cabin with this tool right here. Just this one tool right here, you could build yourself a home. And it's why I appreciate them so much, and that's why I have all these in front of me here, here is because they are really valuable. But anyway, let's um, let's talk about maintenance. My son got a hold of this little hatchet right here, this Fisker's hatchet, which is quite nice. And it's got some pretty good gouges out of the blade. It's got some pretty good gouges out of the blade right there. What I would do in a situation like that is you'd have to remove quite a bit of material to get past those big gouges. Almost all axes, almost every single axe is gonna have a convex grind. That means that it's gonna be a little bit rounded like that as opposed to straight like this. And why? It's because it gives it a more durable edge. It's gonna last longer. It's not gonna be as uh, likely to get damaged hitting something hard because of that shape that it has, that convex shape. And to me, that makes it quite easy to sharpen them because the angle in which you sharpen doesn't have to be perfect all the time. You kind of can kind of do a, a rounding kind of motion when you're sharpening your ax and it gets the job done. Now your ax gurus, your ax sharpening connoisseurs are gonna say, you're doing this wrong. And there's only one way to do this and it's my way. Listen, if your ax gets sharp at the end of the day, then your method works, okay? Same with knives. If your knife is sharp and it gets the job done, then you're doing it right. There's no right way, and there's some wrong ways of doing it, I guess, but, but there's a lot of right ways to get it done. Some people say, you know, straight push strokes are the way to do it. Some people say small circles with a stone is the way to do it. As long as you get it sharp at the end of the day, you're good to go. But I would just file my way down once I get past those big gouges in the steel. You can see where the file is working, I'm, where it gets shiny. That's where the file is taking away some of that material. I'm getting rid of some of that gouge right there. If you have the luxury of a machine to help you out, such as this belt sander right here, man, my workbench always is in a state of disaster. Always, never fails. You know, every day I'm cleaning this thing off. Belt sander works quite well for that convex edge because it's gonna round it a little bit. Maggie, what are you doing? What is it? Sorry, girl, I let you down. Probably my favorite way to sharpen a tool is with just a whetstone like this one. Right here. I'll lock it in my vise. There we go. And then a lot of people like to do just push strokes like this. I like small circles. That seems to work the best for me. And I'll just work that blade along the surface of the stone in small circles, stopping periodically and checking my work, checking the edge to see where, see if I'm getting it the way I want. And you can you can sharpen, Maggie, give it up. No, stop. 
you can sharpen completely without a power tool, without a grinder, with even without a file. You can do all of this repair with just a stone. It just takes a little bit more elbow grease. All right, so I start here, kind of steep maybe, and then I'll slowly start flattening out as I'm working, and then back and forth, and that keeps that convex edge the way that I want. And normally, with good axe use, you don't have to do this much. Typically, I'll just take a diamond stone like this one and I'll hit the edge of my axe after using it and it touches it up, gets it back to brand new. But if you've got a son that likes to chop rocks, apparently, or something, then you need to go into a little bit more depth and a little bit more removal of, of material. We still got a couple little dings in our edge right there, but it's not bad. And to be honest with you, this axe, this little hatchet is serviceable as is. And it will probably get the job done. So I'll just flip this stone over. It's got a smooth and a coarse side. Yeah, she is really, she's really wanting whatever is in there. I don't see anything in there. If it's in there, it's hiding good. I think it escaped on us. Okay, so that's pretty much a finished edge in my opinion. Now, I don't, a lot of people will finish with, you know, they'll say you have to finish with a super fine something or other and then finish with stropping it and all that. Look, I don't think our ancestors spent forever, you know, on their tools, maintaining their tools. They got them serviceable and then they got back to work, right? I don't think our great, 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 great grandfathers that were building log cabins out of the wilderness spent all day long sharpening their axes. Well, they needed their tools to be sharp, but they just needed them to be serviceable. So they would take their stone, probably their whetstone, that they sourced off the landscape because they couldn't carry it all with them, perhaps, I'm making this stuff up as I go here, and they sharpened their tool with that stone to a degree that it got the job done. And then when it was no longer serviceable, they did the same thing and repeated until they wore that tool slap out. But like I said, it takes a long time to wear out a tool like this one. So anyway, I've got a nice keen edge. There's no burr on here. If you had a burr, all you do is you just, uh, what I do to remove the burr is I just increase the angle just a little bit and I very lightly take it across the stone. So I increase the angle a little bit more and then I very lightly take it across the stone and that takes the burr off. But this thing scrapes my thumbnail, right? Scrapes my thumbnail, it doesn't slide across my thumbnail. And to me, that is a serviceable working edge. I like to use recycled materials to build my barn, but that's what happens sometimes when you do that. <laughs> I gotta... I'm gonna have to fix that one. That's a bad leak right there. I'll get up there and put a screw in it or, I don't know, put a smear some caulk on it or something like that, some silicone. Now that our tool is sharp and ready for action, all I do, because pretty much all of my axes live outside, they live out here in the barn, uh, so they're exposed you know, to moisture and, and humidity and all that. They don't get rained on usually, but uh, they do tend to rust if you don't take care of them. So I'll just take some W like that. You can use oil or whatever, but I'll just take some WD-40 like that, give them a quick spray, and then it's good to go to go back on the shelf in the barn or wherever I'm keeping it. My wooden tool handles, I usually use boiled linseed oil. So like, for, for example, this splitting mall right here, I'll take some boiled linseed oil out of my jar, Get my rag in. This has been coated plenty of times with, with oil, so I don't feel like I need to like soak it. So I'll just take a little bit like that and rub it all over the handle like so. And I might pour a little bit on the end of the handle right here where it inserts into the axe head. I might do a little bit more there, but otherwise I just dip in there and lightly coat the handle with boiled linseed oil. And that's pretty much all I do as far as maintenance goes on my axes. If you ever have a handle that uh, gets a little bit loose, 
right? The wooden handle gets a little bit loose. If you do a good job hanging them and they, they're mounted properly, it very rarely happens. And if you keep the wood oil, very rarely will they wiggle loose. But if they should wiggle loose, uh, I'll soak the whole end of the ax right here in oil. I've used, used motor oil for this purpose and that works quite well. You don't wanna use water because it will evaporate and eventually work loose again. But if you dip it in oil, that oil will always stay there. And actually used motor oil works quite well. I've had good luck with that. So I'll soak that whole thing in some oil or linseed oil, that's good too. Um, it's just, it takes a lot, you know, to be able to dunk the whole head in there. So, uh, but dunk it in there, it will soak up that oil and then usually that head will, will stop wiggling. I use all my tools. These aren't collector's items. I'm not hanging them on the wall somewhere to look at and just to be pretty. Uh, all these tools are used a lot. I pretty much, I mean, with the exception of this one right here, this one's pretty much brand new to me at least. Um, I've used all of these pretty extensively. And for the most part, I've used this one right here. This, this split, this is my primary user. This one right here lives in my truck, like I said. And then for small carving type tasks, if I wanted it, I would use probably one of these right here. I like this ax. It's just kind of, it's a little bit too big for the small carving chores. And it's a little bit too small for any big felling type chores. So I tend to, uh, as much as I like it, I really like this little ax. It's just, I don't know. It's kind of not practical for the uses that I would need an ax for. So I like, I like the bigger axes for really actually felling trees down. I really like this Collins ax. And if I'm splitting wood, I'm gonna be using this right here for the most part, 99% of the time. As far as splitting goes or chopping, really any, any of that goes, it's much more enjoyable in my opinion to use a wooden tool, wooden handle tool like this right here. This wooden handle is much more enjoyable to use. I get less blisters. Uh, it seems like my hands get less fatigued um, and, and there's the vibration on the impact is much less. It doesn't hurt your hands as much as it would on one of these synthetic indestructible type handles. So these are great because they're hard, hard to break if not impossible. But uh, the, the user experience is just not as good in my opinion. So should you own an ax? I guess it depends on what you need an ax for. You know, where do you live? What are you gonna do with it? Um, I think so, I think every, homestead every home every truck should have an axe because uh, it's just really really useful for beating on stuff like a sledgehammer and for some big heavy chopping tasks and they are as reliable as all get out i mean it's very easy to maintain them they last forever um it's not they're not as finicky as like a chainsaw you know a chainsaw is awesome you can get a lot of work done with a chainsaw way faster than you can with any axe or saw but spark plugs fuel air filters chains getting dull falling off like there's just a whole lot more to it a lot more maintenance involved in a chainsaw um and for long term you know let's say long term grid down post-apocalyptic type vibes going on around here an axe like this the splitting mall right here is going to it's going to always work as long as you work as long as your body works it's going to work so which axe do you want Depends on what you want to do with it, right? If you primarily are going to be splitting wood with it for your fireplace, then you want a splitting mall, right? You want, in my opinion, you want something like this right here. This one is by great, great, great uncles, I believe. Yes, great. No, just great uncle. Might have been his dad's. Who knows? Uh, this is a really old one, and I just really enjoy using it. This is the one that I use all the time. You probably want that if that's your primary use for an axe. If you plan on chopping down big trees, a double bit like this one is awesome. It's hard to beat it for big trees. If uh, you just want to do some camp chores, bushcrafty type stuff, a tomahawk like this one from Hobo Forge, man, it's hard to beat. Or, you know, a small hatchet like this one is hard to beat. Uh, and like I said, like I said, the middle ground, I just don't, I don't have... And now that I've gotten, I've, now that I've got a lot more experience using axes, I thought that the middle ground was the way to go. You know, I thought originally I thought that this was the way. It's going to be the best of both worlds. I'll be able to carry it with me in a backpack. It's going to get the job done no matter what. But I found that it's just too big, too heavy to carry with me all the time, and it's just a little bit small for big felling chores. I, I just don't like the middle. I don't have as much use for the middle ground. So, for me. I would get 
a splitting maul like this one. I would get a small carving hatchet or tomahawk like this one right here. And then um, uh, a felling type ax like this double bit or like I said, I really like this, this Collins right here. This is a larger, larger ax, not huge. Two and a quarter pound head, not a huge ax, but uh, big enough to get some bigger chores done. If I was just gonna buy one, if I was just gonna buy one of these, hmm, had this one a long time. For the money, it's hard to beat the Fiskars like this one, for the money. If I was just gonna buy one of these axes and none of them had any sentimental value or anything like that, it'd probably be, probably be this guy right here. A medium sized, little bit larger felling type axe right here, this Collins, with a nice slender handle. And if you don't like the handle, wooden handles, you can always change them, right? You can thin them out. If this was too beefy for me, I could take my wood rasp right here. I could take my wood rasp and I could thin out that handle and I could shape it the way that I like. If I could just buy one of these axes, it'd probably be something like this one right here. Inexpensive, a Collins axe is not super expensive um, with a wooden handle. I, I prefer using the wooden handle. Yes, you can break them, but they're not that difficult to replace. If you're in the market for a good ass, guys, a, a hand forged one like this is hard to beat. Hobo Forge Survival, great dude, Jason Smith made this one. It was made with by hand in his shop uh, with lots of care, and he, he cares a lot about his craftsmanship, and this is an amazing tool. A hand-forged axe, another forged one right here. They're very high quality steel. This one's made in Sweden. Really high quality, it's gonna last forever. Really, really good stuff. But you're gonna pay for them, they're quite expensive. This right here, or this one, this plum right here. This is an old ax right here, this old hatchet. I got this for $15 at a flea market. So you can get some good stuff if you're in the market for an ax, you can find some really good ones for not that much money. X maintenance done. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you picked up something useful out of this video. If you did, or you didn't, share it anyway. <laughs> share it with somebody. Really appreciate the shares help out a lot, actually. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I cannot wait to see you on the next one.